Hey guys, welcome back. Working on the school bus again. Got it up in the air. Had to wait for a clutch job to get done on the drive-on rack because that's the only place I can really fit this thing. Um, here's the connector right above me that was getting hot. Let's tear that connector apart, find out what kind of terminals are in there, and see if we can see something wrong with them. Um, I think it'll be pretty easy. I might unplug it, bring it over to the other side of the cross member here. I'll move you guys around with it and we'll start tearing it apart. So even though it's a round connector, it does have the flat blade style Metropack connectors. I'm not sure if it's the uh, smaller terminals or the bigger terminals. Um, I think the smaller ones are the 150 series, the bigger ones are 280. Um, not sure what the numbers mean, but I have both sets in stock, so as long as it's one of those, then we should be able to either crimp on a new connector or repair these and uh, clean them up. Um, that looks pretty nasty. There is a lot of buildup in there. I'm gonna grab some cleaner. I'll clean that off before I disassemble this just to make all the connectors slide out easier. I probably need a set of terminal removal tools and we'll be able to take this apart. I want to pull the grommet off of here because I'm going to use some brake parts cleaner to clean this up. It'll cause this grommet to swell up and then I'll have a hard time getting it back together unless I wait for it to dry out again. So I've never seen a connector quite like this one. Focus. But, we should be able to just release the bottom of this, it looks like, and then slide this piece out. I'm sure the wires will stay put. They should have a secondary release mechanism. That was pretty easy. Um, I might spray it out a little bit more now that that's out of the way. I'm hoping it'll show up on camera. If we look at that, you see that one terminal at the top there, next to this finger, next to my thumb, I guess. Um, you see how it's kind of a dark hole, and the other ones are all silvery. Let me try to get, keep you in focus. That terminal has spread out, so it's not holding enough tension on the uh, on the male terminal that slides into there. Let me see if I can get a better view for you guys before I take it apart. Um, if not, then we'll just go ahead and proceed and take it apart. Okay, so what I got is a USB microscope. I'll throw my, uh, my screen up for you guys. See if we can get in there and focus. So we'll do the good terminal first, or the better terminal. So, man, I'm having a hard time. There we go. A little more zoom than I want, but you see how there's not a lot of clearance. I mean, we're zoomed in a lot. I can't remember what the zoom is on this microscope, but it's quite a bit. There's not a lot of clearance in that terminal. That terminal doesn't look the greatest over there. Um, that orangish brown section looks like it might be damaged. If we go over here to the other terminal, Um, you can see there's a, a very large gap. The terminal is just going to be flopping around in there. Uh, this one has that same kind of tear over there, so that's probably just part of the production process. But this terminal does not have enough tension holding it together. And I guess while we're here, we can look at the uh, release mechanism. Right there is a little plastic tab, and we're going to have to push that tab towards the bottom of this connector to release it from the terminal, and then the terminal can slide out. A little better view of that one. That little rectangular shiny tab down there, I'm just gonna push that down, slide the terminal out. So I got my terminal tool. I know the lighting's kinda of bad, but I'm gonna just push down after I get hooked on there. Pull the wire out the back. 
Now, I don't see any physical damage that somebody else has done. So it has probably just lost its tension from getting hot and cold, hot and cold. It probably had high resistance in that connection. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that as long as I have the right one. Okay, so we don't wanna sacrifice any of our wire length because I don't feel like shortening all the other ones. So I'm gonna pop this insulation back. We're going to cut the connector off right at the crimp. Strip a short section back. Copper looks okay, doesn't look overly oxidized like it's been too hot. This terminal is kind of open here. Can you see that? Um, two open tabs, those are gonna fold down onto the wire when I use these special crimpers. The big circular ones on the top and bottom are for the uh, crimp to crimp the rubber insulator back in place. The center ones are three different sizes for crimping the wire. And I grabbed a bigger terminal, but I think I actually need the smaller one. Um, not the terminal size, but the gauge size. I grabbed the 1214, and I think that's probably a 16 gauge wire. So let me grab a different size here. That looks a little better. This one is a 1614. The other one was a 1214 or a 1412. Crimped nice and tight. Push the wire up a little bit so I can get the rubber boot in there. Okay, so that all looks good. Uh, hopefully it plugs in and clicks into place. I should have verified because this one does look a little different. Oops. So I realized after I crimped this on here that this terminal is slightly different. Um, <laughs> very small difference. The size and shape is about the same, but the locking mechanism is different. The one I had, which is Metropac 280 series, had a spring-loaded tab right there that locks in place and it doesn't use the plastic retainer like the one that I released. What I did is I just cut that spring-loaded tab off at the same location. I'm hoping it'll plug in and latch. If not, I'll have to run over to the dealership on Monday because it is Friday evening. Um, I'll have to run over there Monday, see if they'll let me upstairs and dig through the, their connector bin because um, I know that I don't have one of these. Um, I'm, I thought I did. I went and looked because I vaguely remember something like this when I repaired a heated seat connector on a Buick, but I don't have one in stock. So moment of truth, find out if it's gonna latch. Okay, at that time it pulled on it harder, didn't come out, we should be good to go. I gotta put the rubber grommet back on here. Sorry, that was probably out of focus for a little bit, but put the rubber grommet back on here. Um, I'll tape this harness back up, plug it in, and then we should be good to go. Okay, I have the retaining clip back in. Even if that clip doesn't hold it 100% like the factory one, this retainer back here will help hold it in. Um, but I gave it the old 10 pound tug test Everything looked good. The terminal on the other end over here, I don't see anything wrong with it, so I'm not gonna stress that one. I don't see any fretting. We'll just go ahead and put this back together. So I was trying to get this connector back in there, and I think that this connector is actually supposed to be on the front side of the cross member and not on the back, because 
this barbed clip has nowhere to go if it's back there and it's kind of in an awkward position but it clips in there and the harness clips in right next to it. So I'm guessing somebody moved it at one point to access the fuel filter and they may have unplugged it, plugged it back in. It caused a little bit of terminal issue if they didn't plug it in straight and then it went downhill from there. So we'll plug it back into this location and make sure everything's good to go. And I need to seal up the wires I pierced back over here behind the tank. And as long as it starts up and runs, we'll be good to go. I'll ship it back to the customer. Okay, it looks like we have fuel pressure. Okay, I've got the uh, voltmeter hooked up. Amperage looks pretty good. Voltage looks good. Um, I didn't zoom in on this scale here. So I can do that real quick. Runner about 13 volts at the pump. Our amperage is between six and seven, or six and eight amps. The waveform looks pretty uniform. I think we're good to go there. I also checked the uh, voltage drop on the ground side. Um, I loaded it with a um, headlight bulb, so we're good there. We don't have any issues there. I think uh, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna lower it down. I gotta seal the uh, puncture wound from my probe first. Lower it down, go for a test drive, and then when I get back, I'll double check and make sure that connector hasn't built any heat because um, that would be a sign that I still have an issue in there with high resistance. Okay, we have no excessive heat. That's just a glare off of the uh, the fuel filter over there. But right here is the connector. Try and get that out of the screen. We've been running for about 15 minutes and the connector according to the crosshairs is about 80 degrees. So I think we are all good to go there. Let me see if I can block that false reading. Yeah, no excessive heat from the connector. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.